Tonight, Google's new email app is definitely not Gmail. Twitter wants to get away from passwords. And let's all peek into the future through the Microsoft Garage. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 199 for October 22nd, 2014. This episode is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website or online portfolio. For a free two-week trial and 10% off, go to squarespace.com and use the offer code TECHNIGHT. Hello, everybody. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right into the tech feed. Google is testing a new Gmail app that isn't exactly an email app at all. It's called Inbox. It's currently only available by invite. I'm actually looking for one if you have one. And works in the Chrome browser or on Android phones or iPhones. Now, rather than a traditional list of emails, as we're all used to, Inbox tries to give you enough information about the contents of those emails so you might not actually have to open them. For example, Google Now style information cards appear in line with that email list, including data like flight times or package tracking or photos, anything that can be gleaned out of these emails. Inbox also attempts to bundle emails into groups rather than relying on category tabs as we're used to in the current Gmail format. Google's also applying its algorithms to automatically parse out details like phone numbers and addresses. Now, Inbox doesn't replace Gmail. The apps just use the same data. The Gmail team, which is working on Inbox, says that email has changed a lot since it was invented. I'll say, and that Inbox was designed mobile first. Seriously, where is my invite? Gotta, gotta test this stuff. Microsoft wants us all to know a little bit more about its In the Works projects and has launched Microsoft Garage, relaunched rather, as a way to give the public early access into what the company is currently testing. So currently in Microsoft Garage, we've got 16 free consumer-focused apps that range from Android apps to Android Wear, iOS, Windows Phone, Windows, even Xbox One. Now, among some of them, the City Zen app is designed to help citizens connect to municipalities, letting them report on issues or infrastructure concerns. I don't know, a pothole is, is blocking traffic type of a thing. Floats lets you float an idea out to the people around you to see what they think. Then you can join nearby Floats conversations as well as start your own with a question or idea or an image that you share anonymously. Next Lock Screen is a lock screen app, actually for Android, that surfaces information like calendar items, missed calls, emails, and text messages, as well as swipe uh, into a call into a meeting when it starts, all without unlocking your phone. Microsoft Garage started in 2009 within the Office Labs group with a goal to create a safe place for employee side projects and hackathons and science fairs. Two months ago, Barnes & Noble launched its Samsung Develop 7-inch Galaxy Tab 4 Nook tablet. That's the greatest name ever. And today, the company unveiled its 10.1-inch version at a special introductory price of $299.99. Nothing too special specs-wise here. A 3-megapixel rear-facing camera, a 1.3-megapixel front-facing camera, a 120 by 800 HD screen, 16 gigabytes of storage is now available. That's up from 8. You can also extend this to 64 gigabytes with a micro SD card. Last year, you might remember that Barnes & Noble announced it would no longer make its own Nook tablets, but would continue to build its own dedicated e-readers in-house. And now let's check in with the country of Hungary. I haven't done that in a while or maybe ever. Hungary plans to impose a new tax on internet data transfers according to a draft 2015 tax bill submitted to parliament. Now, the draft contains a provision for internet providers to pay a tax of 150 forints, which is equivalent to about 60 US cents per gigabyte of data traffic. Imagine how that would add up. As you can imagine, the backlash has already started. Facebook groups have cropped up protesting the tax, and a rally is planned for Sunday outside the economy ministry. Prime Minister Viktor Orban's government has, in the last few years, imposed special taxes on banking and retail and energy sectors, as well as on telecommunications providers to keep the budget deficit in check, or that's their... Uh, explanation anyway. The economy ministry also said that it expects the tax to generate annual revenue of 20 billion forints, which if I was better at math, I could convert in real time into US dollars, but I can't do that. But I bet you can. Pew Research has published a depressing new study 
that shows 73% of adult internet users have witnessed someone harassed online. And 40% have experienced personal harassment. That includes things like offensive language or threats or even stalking. The study polled more than 2,849 adults aged 18 to 50 plus and found that 70% of young adults aged 18 to 24 were most likely to experience some form of online harassment. Women in this category suffered severe harassment at disproportionately high levels. That's where it really gets depressing. With one in four reporting being stalked or sexually harassed online. The study asked participants to rate whether different online environments were more welcoming to certain genders. Respondents found dating sites and apps and social networking services and internet comment sections and forum sites were mostly welcoming to both sexes. 44% though said that online gaming was more welcoming to men. Interestingly, half of the people who reported personal harassment said they also didn't know their attackers. Coming up on TN2, your next home security system might be small and round and magnet friendly. And up next, we're joined by ReadWrite Selena Larson, who was at Twitter's inaugural flight conference and will bring us all the news of the day. But first, let's thank Squarespace for sponsoring this episode of TN2. It's the all-in-one platform that makes it easy, really easy to create your own professional website or online portfolio, something that you know, says something about you or your company or, or, your, or your business or, or, or your charity. Here are some of the reasons that you'll love Squarespace no matter why you want a Squarespace site. Beautiful designs. 25 templates get you started. You can actually use a template and, and, and make no changes to it. And people will say, oh my gosh, you must be a freaking wizard. Your blog is so beautiful. Squarespace is just good like that. Of course, you can tinker around as much as you like as well. If you like doing that sort of thing and you run into trouble or you need some help, Squarespace has live chat and email support 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You will always have somebody waiting to help you. I have personally used it and I've always been really satisfied uh, with the level of service that Squarespace has given me. And now all subscription plan levels have the ability to accept donations, kind of an e-commerce part of your site. If you're a nonprofit or you're raising money for for a, you know, a, a, a walk or, or a wedding registry. There's all sorts of reasons why you might want to do that. That's built right into your Squarespace site. Plans start at just $8 a month and include free domain name if you sign up for a year. You probably want to, right? Once you get a nice website, you want to keep it around for a while. Squarespace has two apps. The Metric app allows you to check your site stats and page views and, and who's following you. The Blog app actually helps you make text updates and and, and, and add and drag and drop images, change layouts, basically monitor everything on the go. Hosting is included as well. Squarespace takes care of everything, including hosting, so you don't have to worry about it. And you can start a free two-week trial right now, or you know, when TN2 ends, with no credit card required, and build your website. Just, 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 just get started, two weeks, play around. When you decide to sign up for Squarespace, make sure to use the offer code TECHNIGHT. That's T-E-C-H-N-I-G-H-T. See what we did there to get 10% off and to show your support for Tech News Tonight. Thanks to Squarespace for their support of us. A better web awaits, and it starts with your new Squarespace website. We're joined now by Selena Larson of Read Write. Welcome back to the show, Selena. Thank you so much for having me. Well, thank you for being here. I know you're actually uh, you're, you're, you're in the Bill Graham Civic Auditorium in San Francisco, which is usually a place for music venues. But today yes. it is the place for Twitter's first ever flight conference. What was the mm -hmm. what was the main focus of of, of this conference? Why why did uh, Twitter create it? Yeah, so it was the first ever Twitter developer conference. And this morning, Dick Costello introduced Twitter Fabric, which is essentially a suite of developer tools that will help um, mobile developers integrate Twitter tools like Crashlytics, Mopub, and um, a handful of um, new Twitter tools into building and growing their applications and also um, helping them. Essentially, it helps them um, track stabilization, how reliable their apps are, and they can also um, use Twitter to, sell ad or to display advertising and um, make some revenue for their apps as well. Well. So, you know, I, I saw a lot of talk about Fabric, kind of, you know, it was the fir first uh, big announcement of the day and read a, read a few things about it. And it, it, it seems, I, I, would, I would think that as a consumer, you might look at something like this and say, is this going to change my Twitter experience at all? I, you know, is this just, are these just developer tools that we'll never really see? I mean, as, as an end user who, who likes and uses Twitter, how does it change things for the, the millions of people that, that Twitter ha have using the Twitter service and new customers as well? 
Yeah, so essentially, um, the Twitter consumer product doesn't really change. All of these tools are for developers. Um, and as a, a user, you'll be able to um, use your apps that are actually um, using d um, Twitter developer tools, and you might not even realize that. Also, this extends to um, mobile developers everywhere. So um, people that might not even have a Twitter account may be using apps that are built on Twitter fabric. So um, a lot of people might uh, start using Twitter and not even realizing it because um, their favorite apps are integrated with um, some of the fabric tools. So essentially for the end user, for people who just use Twitter and, and just tweet and keep up with friends and news and events, um, nothing really changes. But there are going to be some, uh, if these tools are adopted widely, they might start seeing some interesting things pop up in, in their own applications, like a, a review on Twitter sign-in. Um, digits, which is actually probably the most popular thing that Twitter announced today, which allows people to sign in to applications using their mobile number. Yeah, so that I wanted to ask you about that because it it I, I understand that in a lot of emerging markets, which of course is is a huge pool of people who may not be Twitter users yet, that Twitter would very much love to become uh, active Twitter users. Uh, mm -hmm. Email addresses aren't necessarily something that everybody has, but mobile numbers are. Not only that, but if you've got a mobile number and you can get a a, a passcode basically SMS to you. Well, that negates the need for passwords that you might forget or or, mm -hmm. or somebody could could grab from you. So. Is the idea that Twitter would eventually like to get rid of passwords for sign-ins? So what is going to end up happening is developers, this is just another sign-in tool. And I'm not sure if Twitter itself wants to get rid of sign-ins altogether. I mean, they do have their Twitter sign-in that lets people uh, use applications and mobile apps with their uh, Twitter information. But this does provide people with another option to um, to connect with apps. So essentially, uh, what you do is you sign in with your mobile number, you get a code, it verifies it. And it, like you were saying, it completely negates the need for having needing a password at all. Um, and it really simplifies the process. And for a lot of places that um, a lot of people might not have a Twitter account, might not have an email account. Um, they do have this option, and, and as you said, it is very popular in developing markets to be able to have um, to have a cell phone with a with a mobile number, and that sort of ties your identity. So Twitter is really betting on the the, the mobile number is your ultimate identity. And all of the developers that I'm chatting with today, um, downstairs, kind of checking out all of this new stuff that Twitter is offering, they seem to be the most excited about this new option because it does provide people with a new way. It does. It is. is it is easier. You don't have to remember your password information, and it's something that you can just set up really quickly and it collects, it keeps it all centralized and you don't have to remember a password. Additionally, it is just one identity. So there's no other data tied to that information, right? So, um, so your Twitter handle might be your name or your Facebook account will be your personal information. But um, with a phone number, that's really all it is. You're just a number in Twitter's database. So Lena Larson writes for Read Write and joins us today from, I think it was a basement room uh, in, in an auditorium in San Francisco. Thanks for going the extra mile. Uh, I know it was a busy day for you, Selena. And, and before you go, remind folks where they can keep up with your work. Yeah, totally. Uh, you can check me out on readwrite.com. And I'm on Twitter, of course, at Selena Larson. Excellent. Well, we'll have you back on TN2 very soon, as we always do. Thanks, Selena. All right, finally, if you're looking for a home security system that isn't too expensive or too invasive, then you might like the Homeboy. Yeah, it's not. It's just, that's just home because it's for the home. It's a small sort of spherical battery-powered camera that records video and even makes a loud siren noise when it senses motion. It can be attached to pretty much a wall or ceiling or anything. It's kind of small and cute and will run for months before its batteries need to be recharged. So to monitor activity, you get alerts over your phone. In fact, you and, and a group of people, you know, you're, everybody in your family can also get alerts and, and, and be on watch. Homeboy won't stream live video all the time, but it'll start recording when the motion detector is triggered. And then it gives you a feed of the activity. So any video that it records while it's armed is live within a few seconds. And you can check in and, and decide for yourself whether you're getting burglarized or if the cat is just going crazy. It's a $149 camera, which is on sale now. It has a built-in motion sensor, night vision, and that siren. And can be put pretty much anywhere via a little separate piece connected by a magnet. The homeboy runs off a rechargeable battery for up to three months. 
very cool. And that is it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to the show. Get it automatically every day of the week, Monday through Friday anyway, every weekday. Twit.tv slash TN2 is the place to go for subscription links and also for our show archive. You can write us with feedback at TN2 at twit.tv. And don't miss Tech News Today, hosted by moi tomorrow and Friday and next week with regular host Mike Elgin, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. Hope you join us then. I'm Sarah Lane, and thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by CashFly.com.